Hey, I wanted to post a quick update about Signals and RxJS. Angular is currently on release candidate RC1. If you try it out, you'll see some changes on how Signals work with RxJS. They renamed from Observable and from Signal, changed how the from Observable default works, and improved exception handling. For an overview of Signals and RxJS, check out the How Angular Signals and RxJS Work Together. You can find the link to that video in the upper right corner now, or in this video's notes. Let's take a look at how the release candidate changes affect our RxJS interop with Signals. Here I have the same project from the above referenced video. Our first step is to update to the latest release candidate version. I'll open package.json. You'll see that I've already made the necessary modifications. I changed the version of the dependencies to dash rc.1 and the version of the dev dependencies to dash rc.0. I then ran npm install to update the packages. With the rc installed, close the package.json file. Now let's navigate down to our vehicle service. Notice the errors here in our import statement. The from observable is now called to signal. And the from signal is now called to observable. Using the to prefix instead of the from prefix helps us think about what we are creating instead of what we are creating it from. We create a signal with to signal and create an observable with to observable. Now let's scroll down to where we are using these two features. Here we create a signal from an observable. This from observable is now to signal, defining the type we are creating. We have two options for how we create a signal with to signal. We can pass a single argument, just our observable. For example, I could create the vehicle signal like this. I use to signal, give it a single generic parameter, which is our vehicle array and pass in our observable. Hovering over the signal, we see that the type of signal is vehicle array or undefined. That's because to signal automatically provides a default of undefined, so we don't have to specify one. That default is used as the signal value until the observable emits something. This is a common use case and is how the async pipe works. But in our case, we want a default of an empty array, so toSignal provides another way to create the signal. I'll delete the new line of code. In this toSignal, instead of passing the default as a second parameter, we pass an options object. Here we set initial value equal to empty array. So toSignal gives us the option to use undefined as the default or use the options parameter to provide our own default. Hovering over the signal, we see that it is a signal of type vehicle array, and we don't need to worry about the value being undefined. Jumping down to our films, we'll make the same change. From observable becomes to signal. And we change the second argument to an object. Initial value, colon, empty array. So that's how we create a signal from an observable. Next, we'll modify our from signal to to observable, again focusing on what we are creating. That's all we need to change there. Lastly, let's take another look at our error handling. Here, we issue our HTTP GET request and catch any error. In our handle error function, we rethrow the error. But looking at our vehicle list component, we have nothing here to catch that error. Let's change our vehicle's signal to a computed property to catch any error from the HTTP request. We'll delete the expression to the right of the equals, then create a computed signal. Then we define the computed expression. First, we'll add a try catch block. As its name suggests, the try block tries a set of code, and if that code generates an error, it executes the code in the catch block. Inside the try block, we return the signal value from the service. Don't forget the parentheses to read the signal value. In the catch, we specify a variable to hold the error we are catching. 
Then in the catch block, we set the error message string that is bound in our template. If the type of exception is a string, we assign that string. Otherwise, we assign the general error message. We return an empty array. Because we assume if the request to read the signal generated an exception, we don't have the list of vehicles. Now we have a way to catch errors when reading signals. There are additional techniques for handling errors with signals that I'll cover in a later video. Let's run it and see if it still works. And there is our welcome page. Click Vehicle List and we see our list of vehicles. Click on a vehicle and we see the details, including the films. Click another vehicle and we see its details. It still works. Now let's cause an error. I'll go back to the service, scroll up, and misspell the URL. I'll add a number after vehicles. And look at our page. We see our error message just as we intended, but we may want to work on making that error message a bit more user-friendly. And don't forget to remove the one so our code works again. I'll go back in and change it and bring the page back up. And here are our vehicles. So that brings our application up to date with the current release candidate. If you have any questions or would like to see a video on another Signal topic, please post those questions or suggestions to the comments. Thanks for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe.